Welcome to part two of the MXGP2 career uh, for the MX2 class. <clears throat> Our first video, part one, was 37 minutes long. Uh, this one will not be that long. We're going to go ahead and jump into the career of the MX2 class and do our second race. And we're actually going to shorten the uh, <clears throat> we're going to shorten the uh, race instead of five laps. We're going to go ahead and shorten it to three. Uh, we're going to keep everything else the same. We're still going to do qualifying. Still going to do the realis realistic uh, difficulty and pro physics and everything else. But we're just going to uh, jump in with three races or three laps instead of five laps and so I think that'll be uh, okay I think we'll get more than enough uh, time out of this I want to cut them cut the videos from hopefully 37 minutes and I want to keep them kind of more along the lines of uh, maybe 10 minutes at tops and so maybe three uh, three laps will be able to provide that and we're not gonna have to go through all the setup things or anything like that anymore we'll already got the box set up everything so we're just gonna dive right in and uh, pay attention to this extremely slow load time right now at 1, 2%, 3%. Uh, if for anybody watching this on YouTube, or Twitch for that matter, either one, uh, it, it will be lower quality. Uh, I live in absolutely the middle of nowhere as far as uh, location is concerned. And so my internet connection is not the greatest. I am going to call... And I'm gonna attempt to get this done better because I'd like to, I'd like to broadcast today higher quality, and that way my YouTube channel gets that at a higher quality. I also have some more YouTube videos that'll be coming out soon with some unboxings of a couple of things. Uh, I had a problem with my computer recently, and so I haven't got everything back up and installed and running properly uh, as far as all my video editing software and everything. So this just has to do for now, and kind of takes up. Is, is is not hard that's not what I'm getting at but it is time consuming and so anyway this is the second race uh, I really don't know how to pronounce Tuet Shintal or Shintal I, I don't know we're just gonna say the second race whatever it is and so it, it's a hard pack track uh, supposedly and so we're gonna just gonna go ahead to our data like we showed last time we're gonna just load our settings because I thought that felt pretty good. I'm actually instead on the 250. I usually run the 450 on medium. I'm going to run the 250 on a higher gear ratio. This is supposed to cause the bike to become faster at top speed. Uh, lower gear ratio will, will get you taken off faster, but you're not going to be able to go as fast. Let's see if we can get a good time in uh, since nobody's really been able to turn any times yet. Auto drive, here we go. Right behind the fellow American. And also, for all you that are in uh, America watching this and you go to Amazon or anything and you want to order this game and you notice that you can't technically get coming out sometime next month, uh, well, I'll just direct. Uh, you can get this game, you just need to import it from Europe. Uh, that's what most all of the Americans. Uh, that I know of that have this game right now, uh, we've we've went ahead and imported it from Europe, and it, it takes a little bit to get here. It's uh, it was roughly the same price as what I would have paid if I had pre-ordered it and waited for it from an American retailer. But you know, it works. It's great. Uh, tons of people on here play online that are American. Uh, just to be honest, most all of the fastest riders that I've had the opportunity to race with online are all pretty much American. Uh, it's because here in America we love our motocross and we pride ourselves in it and we're a little upset we haven't won the motocross of nations in a little bit. But you know what? This year we're going to do it. We got it. Last year we we're close. Had some riders like uh, Cooper Webb that really, just to be honest, uh, was pretty fresh on that 450. And so... But this year, I think we're going to take it. I think we got a good, good group of Americans. I'm not sure who is going to take it throughout. But if Eli Tomac can stay healthy, uh, I'm pretty sure he would take a, a open spot on the team. And if Dungey, uh, with his year off, decides that he wants to take a spot on the team and and defends his championship or goes second or, uh, to to somebody like Tomac, 
I think they would be our, our 450 and or MX and our MX Open class riders. And then uh, somebody like Martin uh, or Cooper Webb would be an excellent choice, in my opinion. Or maybe even Plessinger uh, would be an excellent choice for the MX2 class for the Motocross of Nations this year. And so I'm excited for that. Always, always, that's one of my favorite races. If it's at 3 in the morning, I get up and I'll watch it. Uh, I know every once in a while I have a problem watching it because I do attend church, a pastor church. And so, therefore, it, it's kind of tough at times, you know, when the Motocross of Nations is going on, when church is going on. So church takes first priority. But as long as I can watch it, I watch it. I always order it and watch it live if possible. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm excited this year. Uh, obviously, I won't be able to attend either one of them. But we have two two races from America that are going to be on uh, and Mel and stuff there. I don't know if you guys were able to tell that, but he just invited me to a party, and I just ran off the track. Uh, I am sitting in first position, so I should have thought about that. But we have two races from the MXGPs that are going to be in America. And so I'm excited about that. I think that's awesome. We're going to have the Glen Helen one. Then we're going to uh, have the one in, uh, uh, I guess it's Charlotte area. And uh, let's see if I can skip this time and see if we can stay in first. And so to me, that's that's awesome because the one in Charlotte, uh, it, it's one of those tracks that it doesn't really exist. They're going to build it just for the race. And so, uh, I think that's exciting to me. I think it's going to turn out great. And I think that's going to be good for the GPs. And here's why I say that. Uh, there is some good racing in the GPs, personally. And I, I, I'm USA all the way. I'm hashtag America, uh, especially when it comes to motocross. Uh, but the GPs does have some good racing. I mean, Jeffrey Hurlings, man, that guy is on rails. Uh, I'm I'm not sure he would exactly win if he came to America right off the bat, but he has the talent that if he didn't win the first year and he stayed for a second, uh, I, I, I'm guessing he, he would take the championship. And uh, guys on rails. But the GPs have some great riders, excellent riders, wonderful riders. Uh, I just feel like they're not known enough here in America because – you look at some, you look at the way Europe and the, the countries or states uh, over there are situated. You can go from one to the other. I mean, pretty quick. And so when they start bouncing around these tracks, and it's easier for them sometimes to go between some of their tracks. Not all of them. Not when you get to Thailand or Mexico or things like that. But it's easier for them to go to some of their tracks uh, than it is for us because we'll go from California. And then you travel over 3,000 miles to New York, and I mean you're you're in four different you're four time zones away, and I mean it's it's rough because that truck's got to travel all the way across that country. So uh, I think there's pros and cons to cons to the MXGPs. Here we go, off the start, boom, good timing. All right, good timing, good timing. I actually love this track. It is not my best. I do love it. I just wish I knew how to pronounce it. And there is a scrub. I went ahead and pulled one out. That jump I'm comfortable pulling a scrub out on. Uh, I don't like the scrub feature of this game too well, but on some of these jumps I'm comfortable with it. And I can get up over top of that. Stick inside. Shift up. Wheelie. Alright. Alright. A little too wide on that corner. Oop. To shift down, shift back up. And again, I'm running with no rewinds. What the rewind is, is I know there was some, uh, if, if for any of you unfamiliar, I know there's, ah, come on now. There's some of those uh, games nowadays, it's a real popular feature, especially among uh, the car racing games, where if you make a mistake and you wreck, man, you can rewind and you can go back so many seconds and correct that mistake. Well, it's, this has got the same feature. And I mean, I've used it a few times. Uh, in my first career because I didn't have the best bike set up and I wasn't as comfortable with this and so uh, I used it quite a few times and I mean it's it's good for any beginner in the career setting and it'll kind of help you also uh, learn how the operates and how you can fix it the second time around instead of doing the same thing 
Whoa! Alright. This is going to be a problem. Uh, but personally for this and for these video series, I really... Whoa, Petrov. I really just didn't want to use that. Hey, Petrov's... Uh, yeah, realistically, we should have both went down there. That should not have happened. And, and there's a little lag in the gameplay. And I think earlier, if, if y'all seen that, there was a guy mailing stuff that uh, invited me to a party. Uh, that's one of the online friends. Uh, races a lot, so if you're online you see him, hit him up, say, hey, racing pretty good, pretty decent, beats me. Well, pretty much everybody beats me on this game online, because there's a lot of good uh, gamers out there. And most everybody that plays this game, I, you know, has raced motocross, or they do at the time. And so, it's 250, man. I'm just, I feel like I'm pushing it. I'm like, ah! And I, that, see, they, they rule that inside. I mean, I, I'm sitting there flat tracking it around the outside, and they're just... Paul's Jonas there just whoops me. Alright, come on. I can do this. I can do this. not want to let off. Oh, I'm pushing the envelope here. Oh, man. Come on, get up, get up, get up. There's supposed to be a reset button. I'm not sure how well that button works. I've never got it to reset, but uh, although I have seen some people that have apparently figured it out because they will reset online in a matter of moments once they wreck. Whoa! Tonkov! I do watch the GPs uh, sometimes. I'm a little behind this year, so I don't know exactly what's going on except that Hurlings is leaving everybody again. Uh, I'm going to try to catch on up on them soon, though. Uh, but so some of these names I, I can pronounce purely because I've heard the announcers for the last few years pronounce them over and over and over. And some of them I would butcher even if I heard the announcers say their name two minutes ago. And so. Whoa, should have went down, but I didn't. not win this race. I've got a lot of people to pass on this lap, and I'm just not going that fast. I think what I'll do is I may try switching back after this moto to my medium uh, gear ratio, because that's what I rode the last one on, and that was one of my least favorite track so maybe that's what's caused me a little bit of a problem this time as I'm running on a high gear ratio and I'm not able to get out of my corners and all real well and maybe the 250 needs more of a lower gear ratio or the medium setting so I don't know yet uh, I'm gonna try come on guys or move out of the way I'm faster than you that's all there is to that I'm just holding it open Oh, I might, I might win this race. How about that? Stick to the ground. Get around Tixie A. All right, got two straightaways to go on a couple corners. If I don't mess it up. Up in the first, come on now. Let's hit this inside. Woo, I thought I was going to see a wheel. I didn't. Alright, first place. I think that's going to call for second moto. I might try it in first person view. It's got a pretty good first person view. Alright, let's try it in first person this time. Let's see if I can stay up without wrecking. Load times are a little, little intense. But yeah, overall, uh, I think the MXGPs have ups and downs, and so do the American Motocross. And overall, I, I love watching both. They have their own styles for 
for both. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the transmission back to medium and see what kind of difference that feels. And then uh, leave my suspension the same. I, I thought the suspension felt good. But after the whole shot, I'm gonna switch to first person view. And so let everybody see what that kind of looks like. And so hang that inside pretty much where you always want to be scrub because those AI man they they rule that inside they're on a rail there's just pretty much nothing you can do about that whoa getting a little closer the one bad thing uh, for a video game that I have on this one that I don't like is how in the third person view the reason I like it I mean I love the first person view because it's I love racing motocross you know but in the third person view I can kind of get a feel of where these AI or anybody else is and I know I can stay away but in the first person view here you still go down just as easy if they touch you uh, you just can't really, you know, judge where they're at. And so to me, that's whoop, a little outside there. That's a little bit of a problem in the first person view, but it's okay. You know, you kind of, I guess if you're flying and you're fast enough, it really is not a problem at all. Because they'll never catch you. I just know when this 250 on realistic, you can't really seem to leave them. Kind of stick to you. Whoa! A little close to them signs. Did not think about that. Now, as you can see, I'm I'm trying this race in first person view. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube or, or an after Twitch thing, just kind of leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, because I do intend on doing all these, uh, all the whole entire career on 250s and the whole entire career on 450s uh, for my YouTube channel purposefully. And as, as we go through, the quality will get better once I hopefully get my internet fixed out here and see if they offer a better quality so I can broadcast at a higher quality. But let me know whether you like the third person better or the first person better because, you know, I'll race in whatever view you guys like, whatever makes y'all happy. And so I personally, you know, I think, again, there's pros and cons to first person. There's pros and cons to third person. And as you can see, I'm apparently doing better in first person this race than I did in third person the first race. So, hey, whatever. Whatever makes you guys happy. I just love playing this video game. Whoa! Okay, that was a little bit of a mistake. But, I just love playing video games. I mean, I love uh, talking with other video gamers, especially other motocross video gamers, because I have, you know, quite a few video games. And I play, the spectrum is broad. Call of Duty, uh, you know, Fallout... Halo, the list can go on and on. I, I love video games, but I get so burnt out on video games most of the time because it's just kind of, after a certain point, you, you just, it's the same old, same old, and it's so weird because in motocross, I used to have friends that would go ri race GNCC, and they were always like, don't you get bored with motocross? You're going around the same track that's two minutes long, over and over and over all day long and it, it's not boring to me because I want to challenge myself every single time I go around that track. I want to do better the next lap than I did the first lap. And with these video games like this, it started with back in PC days, uh, motocross madness. I remember racing and I looked at graphics for that the other day and I was, it was they're horrendous, they're awful. But the game was so fun and then motocross madness 2 came out and with that came this wonderful track creator that was a piece of garbage but we found ways to make better tracks anyway and so everybody's making tracks and I mean I was buying a new joystick every single week from preloading and 
snapping the interiors of the joysticks. It was getting extremely expensive. But, you know, the, the competitions, the, the round-robin tournaments that we raced every single week, new tracks were released for the tournament. I mean, it was just so fun. And so it, it never really got old. And then once uh, the PCs moved uh, to a new level and I quit PC gaming as much, you know, I got myself an Xbox 360 eventually, and uh, with the Xbox 360 came MX versus ATV. Uh, I guess it's Reflex. Yeah, it's Reflex. And it separated the rider and the bike, and I mean, it was just, that was the way motocross games needed to be going, and so I loved it. And then they released the live, and they took a step back a little bit. And so it's, I, I just loved the games. I still loved playing them. Uh, but I can ride over and over and over and over and over and the tracks don't get boring and here we go to a finish first place and so I'm running that red plate there on the front of my uh, patriotic KTM with 5.5 seconds ahead of Max Anstey so it's pretty good for a part two uh, again all these credits I've, I've got everything I need though but if you're playing the game you'll get all these credits and it'll be wonderful you'll be able to upgrade your bike get suspension get uh, graphics, whatever you want to get, and so, uh, but that's part two of my MXGP2, uh, MX2 career, and so we'll come to you again, uh, they're wanting me to, uh, do some more stuff, I guess, on this little pub public relations thing, you can always check that if you're playing the game, but thank you for checking in, and thank you for watching this, and if you're on YouTube or whatever, give me a thumbs up, hit, uh, the like button, hit comment, what you prefer first person or third person, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.